In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a mean reverting trading algorithm. And I should start by saying that this video is for educational purposes only. It should not be construed as investment advice. So I'm going to be using a Jupyter Notebook here, and I will provide a link so you can download the notebook in the description of the video. And this video is sort of a companion video to my momentum trading strategy, and I'm going to provide a link for that in the description as well. Okay, so the mean reverting trading strategy assumes that a security is going to move back towards some kind of average whenever it moves too far away. And yep, the general idea is that it will move back towards that mean at some point. There are many ways to look at the strategy, so you can look at it from a linear regression standpoint. Uh, you can use a moving average, All right, and then you have to decide how far is too far and what measurement to use. Some people use a absolute dollar value as a measurement of too far. And uh, in our video, we're going to be using percentiles. All right, we're also going to be using a moving average to determine where that mean is. All right, so with all that said, we can go ahead and take a look at this. First thing I'm going to do is import the necessary libraries here. So I'm going to get pandas, the pandas data reader. So I'm using that to download live data. Uh, you can use any service you like. Uh, I'm going to use NumPy a little bit. We're going to graph some of this stuff with matplotlib. And then uh, I'm just going to use the Seaborn theme uh, to do that plotting. So I'll go ahead and run that cell. Okay, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get some data. And, you know, a good trading algorithm should be generalizable out to many securities. I'm just going to look at a single security, and then I'm going to leave it up to you to see whether or not this strategy would work uh, for something else. And I'm going to use the gold ETF. And using that pandas data reader, I'm going to go ahead and download about five years worth of data here. Okay, and since the only column I'm really interested in is that closing price, I'm going to limit the download uh, to just that column. Okay, once we get our data, we can go ahead and take a quick look at the first few rows. Okay, so we can see that it goes back, yep, about five years here at the time that this video was made. All right, once we have our data, then we're going to just sort of add some columns to the data frame. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is set this moving average. I'm going to set a variable for it so you can go ahead and go back and easily manipulate uh, whatever it is that we end up doing here. All right, and uh, I'm going to calculate the instantaneous rate of return close to close. Okay, next I'm going to add a column to keep track of that mean that we're interested in. I'm just going to call it moving average. And it's going to be based on the closing price in a 21 day or a one trading month average price. Okay, and then to decide when I'm too far away from that mean, I'm going to add another column. I'm going to call it ratio here. And I'm going to divide the closing price by that moving average. And then when I'm too far above it, I will go short. And when I'm too far below, I will go long. Okay, let's take a look at some descriptive statistics for that ratio column. Okay, so we can see, as expected, the price is generally right around the mean. Okay, and we don't get too far away from the mean with this with this slice at the descriptives, right? We only go down to the 25th percentile and up as high as the 75th. We do have the min and max. That's probably too far. All right, so we probably would define some other place as being too far away from that mean of around one. Okay, so I'm just going to make a variable, call it percentiles, and I'm going to put in the price points that I think might work, right? So I'll look at the fifth, the tenth, all right, I'll look at that middle, the 90th, and the 95th. Okay, and to get a look at where these percentiles are, I'm going to use the NumPy percentile function and I'm gonna pass in the gold ratio column. All right, and NumPy doesn't handle missing values very well, so I'm gonna first drop all the NAs. All right, and then 
I'll pass in this percentiles variable, and when I run that, we should see where the breaks are. All right, so by the time I get down to the fifth percentile, I am 3% below that moving average. All right, and then when I get all the way up to the 95th percentile, it's a little bit more. I'm 3.5% above it. All right, so not exactly symmetrical here. Okay, I think it makes sense to probably take a quick look at this visually. So I am going to go ahead and plot that ratio column. All right, I'm going to leave off the irrelevant values by dropping NA here. I'm going to hang plot, and uh, I'm going to get a legend. Okay, we're going to add to that a, a few horizontal lines so we can see where these price breaks are. All right, and then I'll plot the fifth percentile, so that's P0. All right, and I will just set a color here. All right, and I will make it a dashed line. All right, and then I'll just copy this to plot the other two lines that I want to see. All right, so I want the 95th percentile, so that's minus one. And then I also want the 50th, uh, which is index position two. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so we can see the movement of that ratio, all right, around that mean, all right, it's never really there, but it does move through it and almost cyclically, all right, uh, we can see that generally, right, when it moves above, it corrects back, and it doesn't correct back exactly to the mean, so some strategies you'll see will go neutral once you get back to the mean, all right, but it looks like it continues down, all right, so once it gets too far above, it will overshoot to the downside before turning around and coming up. All right, it's not a perfect relationship, but it looks like there is that tendency. All right, so we'll keep that in mind uh, when we try to build our algorithm here. All right, so we're just about ready to do that. Uh, I'm going to do that by, you know, defining a place where we go short, and a place where we go short is going to be that 95th percentile, and then I'll define a place where we go long, and that will be the 5th percentile. All right, next I'm going to add a column to our data frame, and this is basically the algorithm here. We just need to know whether we're long or short. All right, and I'm going to use mpware, which is essentially NumPy's answer to Excel's if function, and uh, I'm going to look at the gold ratio column. All right, and when it is greater than uh, the short, we're going to Put a negative one there to indicate that we're short. Uh, otherwise, in every other cell, I'm going to put not a number. All right, we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing to go long here. All right, we're just going to reverse the sign and we're going to go long. And when we go long, we're positioning at one. Okay, and instead of numpy not a number here, I'm just going to leave whatever's already there there. So. Just refer to whatever's already in that column and row. All right, so this only marks the places where we are outside of the boundary of that fifth or 95th percentile. So what I'm going to do here now is just forward fill down. So we're always going to be in a trade according to this strategy. Some of these strategies, like I mentioned before, they do go neutral. Ours is always going to be in a trade, either long or short. All right, so I'm just going to redefine gold position here and I'm going to use pandas forward fill to fill down as soon as we're short we're going to fill down until it bumps into a place where we go long okay and it probably makes sense to take a look at the actual position here so I am going to plot that okay so down here it indicates we're short at some point right? Not right at the beginning because we have to at least drop off those first 21 days. So at some point we go short, we're short for a while. All right, then we go long, all right, short and so forth. Okay, so we're going to add a column to figure out what the strategy return is versus the buy and hold returns. Okay, and this is going to depend on whether we're long or short. And uh, we're also going to have to wait a day to use our signal so we don't sort of build into our model this look ahead advantage. So I'm going to take a look at gold returns and I'm going to multiply that by the position column. All right, but I'm going to shift it ahead one day. Okay, and with all that done, 
we can compare the buy and hold to the mean reverting algorithm. Okay, and it turns out that I made a mistake earlier when we were setting up the data frame, and uh, I'm going to leave that error out of the video, but I went in the wrong direction when I was calculating the instantaneous rate of returns. All right, so instead of using MP log here, I used NP exponent, right? And then all of a sudden, uh, Python has a problem uh, calculating values that get really big. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly run back through. That's the only change we really need to make here. Okay, and now we should be able to go ahead and plot the buy and hold strategy against the mean reverting strategy. Okay, so we can take a look at that. And uh, I might as well plot the legend since I put in the labels. Okay, so we can see that, in fact, the mean reverting strategy does outperform over the five years here. At least by some margin, it does outperform buy and hold. And we can see for some period of time, it really outperformed it. All right, and if we want to get the absolute returns here, we can just go ahead and look at the final value for each of the columns there. Okay, so we can see that over this five-year period, if we implement our strategy, uh, we have about a 7% uh, superior return. All right, and, and maybe we can do better than that. All right, and uh, I'm going to leave it up to you to play with the percentiles when you go long and short. All right, or you could uh, throw in this idea of going neutral at some point, right? So the position in that case would be zero. But this should be enough to get you started. And uh, I hope that helps taking a quick look at the mean reverting trading algorithm.